for the vulnerable in our society, a retirement income scheme for farmers as well as members of small and uh, small scale business associations such as the GPRTU and the ProTua. Furthermore, we will ensure that the funds of the National Pensions Regulatory Authority are applied solely for the purpose of development of pension. And we will fully implement Section 103 uh, of the Pensions Act, which assigns pension benefits for housing of workers. Pay, we will pay all outstanding contributions to the pension funds, including Tier 2 contributions for public sector workers. Mr. Chairman, fellow Ghanaians, the challenges of development and poverty in Ghana should not be a matter of geographical location. Around Ghana, there are millions who face poverty and deprivation daily and who can't and who need urgent, deliberate interventions from the state to improve their lives and circumstances an MPP government will aggressively pursue policies that will be target, targeted at particular segments of our population who continue to be excluded and who miss out on the myriad of opportunities that abound, not only in Ghana, but in the globalized world. We have seven major initiatives, seven major initiatives designed to take giant leaps in transforming Ghana holistically with particular emphasis on rural and deprived communities in a major effort to, to, at inclusive development of all parts of Ghana and by adopting a localized development approach. On the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority, Mr. Chairman, the NDC in 2008 promise to take immediate and urgent steps to bridge the development gap between the North and the South through the setting up of SADA to, and to be directly under the President with a vision and mandate to accelerate socioeconomic development of the Savannah Belt of Northern Ghana. They promised to establish a special fund for SADA and pledge an initial startup contribution to the fund of 200 million Ghana cities with additional annual contributions of 100 million each year for 20 years. The NDC also promised that once SADA was established, the government of Ghana would lead a donor conference on Northern Ghana with the aim of raising an additional 200 million from Ghana uh, development partners and the private sector in order to assure the new authority a firm and solid foundation. Per the manifesto promise of the NDC, SADA should have had at least one billion CDs allocated from Ghana, from the government of Ghana to it by now, in addition to other funds that were to be sourced from development partners and the private sector. However, Mr. Chairman, according to the 2012 manifesto of the NDC, 260 million Ghana cities had been allocated to SADA by 2012. In 2013 and 2014 budgets, 20 million, 20 million Ghana cities were allocated to SADA per year, while there was no mention of SADA in the 2016 budget. This means that a total of 300 million Ghana cities has been allocated to SADA as of 2016 compared to the promised one billion. Not only has the Mahama government refused to make the resources available, they have also supervised and led the thievery of the 300 million allocated to SADA. The 300 million Ghana cities was virtually pilfered into private pockets. Since 2012, Ghana, uh, SADA has hardly received funds from the government for capital projects. This contravenes the SADA Act of, uh, of 2010, which enjoins government to make annual budgetary contributions. Also, six years after the passage of the SADA law, the provision that stipulates that taxes on petroleum imports to help ensure sustainable funding of SADA is yet to be implemented. Mr. Chairman, we all know about the guinea fowls 
and a tree plant. Sada has basically become a create, loot, and share scheme. What is surprising, however, is that the NDC's 2016 manifesto basically promises to replicate the failed SADA experiment in other parts of the country. Our solution is different. We will restructure SADA and transform it into a more focused Northern Development Authority, as originally envisaged, and make it a flagship program for the economic transformation of the three northern regions. There will be a presidential-led support for genuine entrepreneurship development in northern Ghana. Industrialists, entrepreneurs, manufacturers, food processors, marketers, and so on uh, will witness a new dawn of government support in northern Ghana. But we are not only going to deal with the northern regions. All the three parts, the northern, the middle belt, and the coastal regions of Ghana need support. So like the other development, like the SADA, the MPP is going to establish the Middle Belt Development Authority, which will serve as the main development agency for the middle belt of the country in particular the Northern Volta, Western regions, the proposed Western North region, in addition to Ashanti, Eastern, and Brongahafu regions. The coastal regions will not be left out. The MPP will establish a coastal development authority, which will serve as the principal development agent along the coastal communities of Ghana covering the coastal areas of the Volta, Western region, Volta and Western regions, in addition to the greater Accra and Central regions. Again, it will, be, um, it will be like SADA, it will be like the Middle Belt Development Authority. Mr. Chairman, in addition to these three development agencies that will make sure development reaches all parts of the country and we have equal opportunities for all, we also note that the rural areas of Ghana continue to be neglected and the poverty levels in our rural areas are very high. The capital expenditure budget has historically been skewed more towards the urban areas than the rural areas. The MPP is going to reorient the national capital expenditure budget to place a focus on rural and deprived communities. In this vein, we are going to implement a, an infrastructure for poverty eradication project. And this infrastructure for poverty eradication, when this will take an amount equivalent to $275 million to be reallocated. And the idea is to have local solutions to local problems. Every constituency in Ghana, every constituency, can expect on average to be allocated $1 million annually, annually. From the capital budget, this is equivalent to 4 million Ghana cities or 40 billion old cities. Every constituency will get this annually. We'll, we'll reallocate exp expenditure to the rural areas and these resources will be used for capital expenditure to upgrade and improve infrastructure such as water, toilets, dams, ICT community centers, and so on, or to develop new facilities in rural and deprived communities. Our One Village, One Dam initiative in the three northern regions, for example, our One Village, One Dam initiative in the three northern regions, for example, will be funded under this program. In fact, Mr. Chairman, in the first two years of an MPP administration, under this infrastructure for poverty eradication program, where every constituency will get $1 million every year for rural and deprived communities, under this program, there should be no village or community in Ghana after the first two years that would have a water problem or a toilet problem. 
There should be no village or community. Once we implement this, the first two years, we will make sure you will not have a water problem or a toilet problem, by the grace of Allah. It is important to note that the program is not going to require new money. Rather, we are going to allocate existing money towards our key priority, which is the eradication of poverty. This program is also not going to rely on donor funding. We are going to use our own resources to solve our own problems. So nobody should ask us, where are you going to get the money? The money is already there. If you stop stealing the money, we will use the money for the development of our people. This program will be administered by the respective development authorities. The Northern Development Authority will be responsible for the constituencies in the Northern Ghana. The Coastal Development Authority will be responsible for constituencies along the coast. And the Middle Belt Development Authority will be responsible for constituencies in the Middle Belt. And all these authorities will report directly to the office of the president. Mr. Chairman, fellow Ghanaians, the MPP will also establish a Zongo Development Fund. This will be the first time in the history of Ghana that we are going to establish a Zongo Development Fund. The fund is designed to help regenerate and revive our Zongos. Residents in the mostly densely populated Zongos are impacted by business activities, social conditions, and effluents that are unique and which require special attention. Over the years, however, these communities have been left behind in development planning. Residents and their needs have been poorly identified, leading to inadequate and sometimes inappropriate intervention and the social services and physical infrastructure. Zongos are vibrant places. They are communities with opportunities in local culture, specialty foods, and tourism that, if properly invested in and harnessed, can create jobs and economic growth at the community level. Our Zongo Development Fund is aimed at regenerating and reviving these communities. And they will, the fund will invest in education and training and development within the Zongos, improved infrastructure in the Zongos, targeting health, sanitation, supporting local businesses and centers of culture and arts, and in community policing and security. Mr. Chairman, following the appropriate constitutional pro procedures, we propose to create a Western North region out of the existing western region in order to open it up for development. The northern part of the western region is resource rich, but has not fully reached its economic and job creation potential for a long time. There's a strong economic case for creating a western north region. Furthermore, Mr. Chairman, With regard to our mining communities, mineral, with regard to mineral royalties, the MPP will make sure that mining communities receive a higher share. Currently, 80% of the royalty goes to government, 10% to the Mineral Commission, and 10% to the community. The MPP will reduce the government share to 70% while doubling the community share to 20%. The additional 10% to the community will be given um, to the assemblies to be used specifically for infrastructure in the mining communities. This will ensure more value is retained in mining communities for development. Together, these seven initiatives 
will be directed at implementing key decentralized action plans to tap the enormous resources available for every part of the country. No part of the country is going to be left behind under these initiatives. This is why we say equal opportunities for all. In addition, Mr. Chairman, fellow Ghanaians, I would like to state that Nana Adodankwa Akufuado has given his commitment that under an MPP government, teacher training allowances will be fully restored. And in addition, nursing training allowances will be fully restored. The recent about 10 <laughs> by the President Mahama on the issue of teacher and nursing training allowances is purely an election year gimmick, which should be treated with the contempt it deserves. At this stage, at this stage of the electoral cycle, President Mahama will say anything to get re-elected. Fellow Ghanaians, what the MPP is going to build with some of the policies that I have just outlined in this manifesto and more of the policies that my colleagues are going to come up and outline. What the MPP is going to build with these policies is going to be a new economy an economy that will grow and create jobs, prosperity, as well as offer equal opportunities of all. The future under the MPP, under the leadership of Nana Adodankwa Akufuado is going to be a bright future. God bless you. God bless Ghana. Salamu alaikum. One more time, let's hear it for Al Haji, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Wave your flag, ladies and gentlemen. Wave your flag, wave your flag, wave your flag. Wave your flag. Wave it! 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 Wave it!